then we move in to the principle of overload, which means you have to challenge yourself. If most of your sets, someone else watching them can't tell if you're warming up or doing what's called a working set, like a real set, you have a problem. So towards the end of all of your sets, either the weights are slowing down, or even if it's the same speed, to you they feel perceptively harder. You know, you do this, this, mm -hmm. this, and then a couple of you're like, that's what you want. You said there's two types of effective training. One of them's hy hy can't say this word. One of them's hypertrophy. Very good. And the other one is periodization. Uh, so periodization is the scientifically based organization of any kind of training that you want. Okay. Hypertrophy training is a type of training. It's just muscle growth training. It's like a fancy fucking science word for just getting more jacked, putting on muscle. That's the technical definition of hypertrophy. And when you train for hypertrophy, you can do it kind of like by feel and more or less at random, and you'll get pretty good results in most cases. But to get your best results, you want that training to be periodized. Periodization is the scientific approach to how to organize your training to get sort of roughly three things. Some of these are a bit more for athletes and not regular people. Get the best results that you can, peak at an appropriate time, abs for summer, and minimize injury risk. And taking all the science that we know, that plan that you've made because you did it in an evidence-based fashion, that is now what is considered a periodized plan. So that's how those two concepts relate to each other. It, what do I need to know about hypertrophy in order to be able to achieve it? Is there anything really foundational? Because I think everyone wants a bit of muscle growth. Um, yeah. I, spend, I think I spend too long in the gym. I think I could be much more efficient um, when I'm training. What would you recommend that I start thinking about as fun foundational principles when it comes to hypertrophy, muscle growth? One is specificity. It's the most important principle in all of sport training and exercise science is uh, what am I here for? What do I want? Because you can do a bunch of exercises in the gym and you're like, that was great. And someone's like, are you getting the results you like? And you're like, well, I, I, what I want is a bigger bicep. I'm like how many bicep exercises do you do? Like, I think upright rows, maybe. So I want a bigger bicep. bicep. If right. we just focus on me give, getting Stephen Butler a bigger left bicep. So specificity is telling yourself, okay, I want bigger biceps and whatever X, Y, Z other muscles. Then we move in to the principle of overload, which means you have to challenge yourself. If most of your sets, someone else watching them can't tell if you're warming up or doing what's called a working set, like a real set, you have a problem. So towards the end of all of your sets, either the weights are slowing down, or even if it's the same speed, to you, they feel perceptively harder. You know, you do this, this, mm -hmm. this, and in a couple reps, you're like, that's what you want. Every real working set should be challenging. You should be approaching every real set with just a teeny, teeny dose of trepidation. Like, oh boy, here we go. I'm going to have to try. Once you have that, and a set is a, a group of repetitions. Correct. So yeah. if I do 10 repetitions, that's one set. One set, okay. yeah. And so your sets have to be sufficiently heavy. Uh, anything between roughly five reps per set and 30 reps per set, where the last few reps are getting close to you not being able to use good technique and lift the weights, check plus. So there's not a, a set, a perfect amount of repetitions to do? There is. It's a trade secret, and I'd have to say it off camera to you. But, okay. uh, NDA to sign. Okay, we're off thing. camera. All right, great. So it's 17. <laughs> um, there is, so there's just tons of tons of contextual nuance kind of stuff. Some people, some of their muscles will seem to respond better to sets of 5 to 10. Other folks, even the same person could have muscles in their body that really respond better to sets of 20 to 30 and everything in between. But generally, you get in, in the exercise science data, you'll have a group of people training for sets of roughly five reps, another group training for sets of roughly 30 reps, and their change in muscle growth over eight, 12, 16 weeks is statistically undifferentiable, which means if I delabel the groups and you don't know which one's which, you can't actually tell me who trained with higher reps or lower reps. For muscle growth, it's roughly the same. And that's so crazy. 
we're using the same weight. I'm guessing no, different, different weights. Yeah. Different weights. Okay. A weight that is challenging for five reps is much heavier than a weight that is challenging for 30. Uh, okay. So I do wonder this all the time when I go to the gym. I wonder if I should be doing, I don't know, 30 reps of 10 kg on my bicep, or I should be doing 10 reps of 20 kg. They're both right answers. No wrong answers there. And they both have the same chance of growing my muscles as long as the strain that I experience subjectively is difficult at the end of those sets. Correct. Okay, interesting. Which is really good news because that's like another thing you don't have to worry about. Which means at home I can get any range of weights versus having to get really, really big ones to grow my muscles. As long as they're not so tiny that you're on rep number 45 and you're like, I could just do this for forever. Mm. Or they're not so enormous that you're like, I can't really even do two reps of this. Anything between roughly five and roughly 30 reps, challenging is really, really good.